Are you being manipulated? First, we're going to look at the story of Kenneth Osborne really quick just to put a baseline of the dangers of manipulation. And then we're going to do a presentation on spotting and preventing the manipulation in the wild. So it's, it's possible that you're blocking that out, putting yourself down the road where you wanted to be. You got to be Imagine being convinced that you committed murder and you just don't remember it and that your mind just blocked it out. No, this is not a movie. This is the real life story of Kenneth Osborne. They have satellites that are over our head right now that keep constant 24 hour surveillance of everything that goes on. And I've got these photographs at the time of the 28th, the day that she disappeared. And it's, it's got a white truck on 43 Canal Road. And Ken, it's your truck. The manipulation of a reality itself can twist perception to anything you need it to be. Just as online manipulators weave tales that blur the lines between fact and fiction, so did the tactics used in Osborne's case. So what they did is they took a vehicle that was similar to Kenny's, parked it out there, and somehow were able to get an overview shot of that crime scene, suggesting that his vehicle was able to be pictured during the purported crime. And that was untrue. They used fake satellite images, coerced confessions, gaslighting. We're about to dive into a world some true pieces of shit have really started fucking with people's heads. But you're blocking that out. Putting yourself down the road where you want it to be. You got to do that. Earlier, you said it wasn't possible you were on Blade Road. You remember? You said it wasn't, and it, I, I wasn't on Blade Road. Then your mind opened up a little bit, didn't it? And when it opened up, you realized not only is it possible, but I was there on Blade Road. Taking yourself from which way you didn't want to be or where you wanted to be in your mind. You see something evil in your mind, and you try to block it out, but you have to get so evil that you can't block it out completely, so you have to replace it with something else. No, you're not. Evil is in your mind, you get your mind right. Your mind is coming around, okay? Open it up. Open it up. Your mind is coming around. Dude, what worthless piece of shit, dude? These dudes are fucking clown shoes, bro. Manipulation. Gaslighting. Gaslighting is a reference to a 1938 play and later 1944 film, Gaslight. Distorting facts, denying events, and exaggerating inconsistencies to make individuals question their own sanity and perception of reality. I just thought that was neat with Gaslight. Isn't that really neat? Anyways, let's get into the presentation. They aren't your friends, manipulators, frauds, and pieces of shit. A lot of people get taken advantage of online. It's not even just for financial gain. It could be for just gain in general. They may want your viewers if you're a streamer. They may want your views if you're a YouTuber. They may want your Discord. They may want you to make videos for them or things of that sort. They aren't your friends. They're manipulators. They're frauds and they're pieces of shit. All right. Introduction. Uh, we will discuss the pervasiveness and dangers of online manipulation. Highlight its impact on mental well-being, self-esteem, and online safety. Understanding the art of deception is crucial to identifying fake friends and online manipulators. This presentation will provide insights and strategies to unmask these individuals and protect yourself from their influence. Persuasion versus manipulation. They're not the same thing. Persuading somebody of something is absolutely fine. That's normal. Ethics are the dividing line between influence and harm. Persuasion, persuasion is uh, wielding logic and understanding uh, respectfully guides us towards new perspective. Manipulation, driven by a hunger for control, exploits vulnerabilities with lies, coercion, and emotional manipulation. At its most insidious, it even warps our perception of reality, leaving us questioning our own sanity known as gaslighting. 
Persuasion empowers and manipulation disempowers. While the former empowers us with new perspectives, the latter steals our autonomy and well-being. Tactics of the scumbag. Recognizing red flags such as inconsistency, envy, lack of empathy, doesn't matter, we're gonna list a lot. Um, other manipulative behaviors are key to understanding the mind of the true piece of shit. We will discuss some common manipulator types and, you know, how to protect yourself from these things, how to spot it and how to protect it. The first thing in the tactics, the unmovable goalpost. These fixated chess players have one play, their agenda, an unshakable North Star regardless of the carnage it leaves behind, their way or the fucking highway. Charm may shift, tactics may morph, but the end game remains relentless and cold. Expect pressure cooked decisions, exploited anxieties, and fabricated crisis, all woven to serve their puppeteering needs, okay? But the counter to the unmovable go coast. Unmask the urgency, dissect the perfect solution. How else can we do this? What other paths lay ahead? Is this the only way? This simple question throws sand in their gears, forcing them to engage in genuine dialogue and not manipulative dialogue. Doesn't mean they're not going to try another method. Let's be clear. The mind reader's delusion. Manipulators love dictating your inner weather. You seem anxious, they whisper, not in concern, but to sow seeds of doubt. I mean, you can see it. You can see it and mold your reality. They paint their interpretations onto you. It's called projecting. Like warped shadows on a wall, aiming to make you question your own perception. Refuse the label. Why do you say that? Evidence, please. I disagree. You disagree, and it's my body, my feeling, you know, like my fucking brain. I know what's going on in my fucking brain. All right. Facts laced with fiction. This is a tough one, dude. This is when you start getting into the toughies, all right? Um, the masters of disguise cloak opinions in the garb of truth. This is the right choice for you, they purr. Or everyone knows you made a mistake. Presenting personal agendas as universal truths and pronouncements. Peel back the facade. How do you know? Um, it's a sword that pierces their fabricated reality, forcing them to defend their pronouncement, not hide behind borrowed authority. The whispering crowd. This is a deep one, dude. Manipulators wield social pressure like a loaded gun. They conjure whispers of disapproval, invent scenarios where everyone agrees with their twisted narrative. This phantom social proof is their weapon and it's designed to make you feel alone and vulnerable and more likely to cave in to their demand. It also can lead to groupthink. A groupthink is a psychological and sociological phenomenon that occurs when a group of people makes poor decisions to maintain the group harmony. We didn't want to step on any toe. We didn't want to rustle any feathers. And sittings for bitches. Pussy. Don't do it. Counter. Disarm the phantom crowd. Funny, everyone I talk to says this. That means putting your foot in the sand, drawing your line in the sand, putting your foot down, is your counter spell. Well, weaving your own social fabric, reminding you that you're not a lone puppet dangling in their web. They're not the all-knower of the social crowd, all right? Group thinks very dangerous. The intimacy trap. Lone wolves rarely hunt. Manipulators seek the shadows of one-on-one -on -one interactions where their webs can be spun without the scrutiny of witnesses. When people are constantly trying to get you in your DMs and getting you, oh, I don't want to talk around them and blah, 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 blah. Be wary of those who crave private conversations, especially when sensitive topics dance in the air. Counter is to shine a light on uh, transparency, uh, insist a third party, a friend or a colleague even a uh, legal guardian. Their presence is a shield. Depends on the situation, I don't know. A reminder that genuine connection thrives in the open. The fabricated past. The most chilling act of manipulation is rewriting history itself. False memories, photoshopped scenes, and embellished narratives become the brush, painting over your own recollection. This is a weapon honed in high-stakes situations. Interrogations, because that's what it is legal battle 
where reality itself hangs in the balance. Counter is um, skepticism is your arm. If something feels off, dig deeper. Like when people tell when you see smoke, keep digging. There's nothing to see here. Yeah, probably it. Demand proof, scrutinize details. Don't let them rewrite your own story or theirs. Remember, your past is yours to own, not theirs to distort. Guilt tripping. We know what this one is. Uh, making you feel responsible for their emotional state through criticism, silent treatment, or exaggerated displays of disappointment. That's fucked up. Don't do this to people. Silent treatment, exaggerated displays of disappointment. All right, stop it. Counter, set boundaries and refuse to accept blame for their emotions. Clearly state your emotions are your responsibility. They're not anyone else's problem, guys. Gaslighting. Gaslighting is twisting facts, denying events, exaggerating inconsistencies to make you question your own sanity and the perception of reality. Counter, uh, trust your gut. Validate experience with outside sources. Keep thorough records. Don't let them trick you. It'll warp your mind forever. Trauma bonding. This is one of the newer ones. Um, fostering unhealthy attachments through cycles of abuse and comforting. Fostering dependence and eroding self-esteem. So that's, I'm nice, I'm mean. I'm nice, I'm mean. Or it could be something else. It could be they're going through something and they allow that emotional baggage to be dropped on them and they're like oh man i can finally do this until it's time you don't understand bro they letting you a little bit in because they got a lot for you and they're about to suck every bit of energy out of you that you have a good counter to this is uh recognizing signs of trauma bonds uh seek outside perspectives to validate you do need outsiders to validate sometimes they don't understand probably because it's fucking weird prioritize self-care uh, a few manipulator profiles that I came up with. Um, shallow sympathizers. Uh, they feign empathy to exploit the vulnerabilities and isolate you from your support system. A unique tactic is questioning your reality. This is the sympathizer. The gaslight. Curated chameleons constantly shift their online personas based on audience. Sounding familiar? Excessively seek validation and applause. Unique tactic is fabricating fake online identities. This is prevalent. Woe is me. They cloak themselves in victimhood. We know, and everyone knows a victim. And negativity to control through guilt and pity. Like it's the only method they have left. Unique effect, and it may stem from genuine personal struggles. It may actually so, but they're not someone else's fucking problem. Okay, they're not. Conformity enforcers. Pressure groups to adhere to certain agendas or belief systems. Leads to groupthink. This is one thing they do. They silence dissent. Even start it, on the lighter end of it, it's gatekeeping. Like fun. Like gatekeeping fun. You can't. Uh, you don't like that game? You're a bitch. Yeah. Uh, oh, what a stupid. Well, you're a child. Uh, eat my ass. Impact of manipulation. In summary, the effects of chronic manipulation, regardless of type, include emotional exhaustion, anxiety, depression, distorted self-perception, and compromised value. Self-doubt, damaged self-esteem, isolation from support systems, and dependence on the manipulator's approval. It's a car headed right for the wall. Get the gas, bye bye. Um, effects. Um, in summary, the various tactics of emotional manipulation can lead to anxiety, social isolation, loss of autonomy. That's the one, man. That's the one. Damage of steam and overall loss of trust in personal relationships. Uh, seeking the help from professionals, uh, friends, and family is crucial to regain control. Prioritizing self-care counteracts the emotional strain. And continually educating oneself makes you better prepared to deflect future manipulation attempts. You know, if it stops one person from being manipulated, yeah, man, that's all I fucking need. You can get a few of these, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're being manipulated, but it creates a pattern. It will continue. All you like, if you don't think there's enough to go on, wait. Come back to the video, watch it again. Sad truth, guys. Some of us are manipulators too. Hell, I could be. I don't seem to know a lot about it. Who knows? But any of us can. So here's a few. Let's start. Let's start this one over. Let's disarm the charm. Okay. 
Recognize the map. Dethrone the urgency. Manipulators are always urgent because they're very selfish and they need right now, right now, right now. They thrive on pressure cooked decisions. When faced with their limited time offers or urgent pleas, slow down, breathe, cue the fuck out, Papa Zanny. Remind yourself that genuine opportunities don't require breathless haste. Set healthy boundaries. Don't let emotions rule. Define your personal boundaries, physical, emotional, and informational. Set those boundaries. Learn to say no with confidence, without guilt or justification. You don't have to justify anything you do, but you have to admit that you did it. Shatter the illusion. We're going to unmask the puppet. Manipulators love dictating reality. They twist narratives, plant false memories, and gaslight you into questioning your own perceptions. Stay grounded in your truth. Validate your experience with trusted friends or professionals. Really. Find someone, and if you don't have anybody, find somewhere online, find something, all right? Use the fucking AI. That's chat goddamn GBT. Jesus. No excuse. I become a skeptical detective. Don't accept information at face value. Never. Question what they say, especially when it aligns too perfectly with their agenda. Right there. Question what they say, especially when it aligns too perfectly with their agenda. Diverse perspective. Verify facts. Don't let their emotional manipulations cloud your judgment. Embrace the power of silence. Sometimes the most potent weapon is silence. Don't fuel their fire by engaging in endless argument. Instead, step back, observe, and break the cycle of manipulation by calmly refusing to play the fucking game. Deflecting emotional attacks. Some, here we go, here we go. Uh, fogging. Respond to hurtful attacks with vague, non-committal statements that don't engage with their accusations. Instead of, you're making me feel insecure, try, that's an interesting perspective. I like it. Broken record. Repeat a simple, neutral phrase like, I understand you're upset, or I need some time to process this. Redirect the conversation away from their emotional manipulation. Um, a timeout. Don't be afraid to take a physical or emotional break from the situation. Step out. Breathe. Leave. Return when you're ready to communicate calmly and assertively. This is so true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, setting and enforcing boundary. A few ways to do this, okay? Direct communication. Instead of vague hints, state your boundaries clearly and directly. Leave no room for misinterpretation. For example, say, I won't answer your calls past 10 p.m. Or, I'm not comfortable discussing X topic with you. This, I have seen time and time again, works great with online friends that have different perspectives. If they cannot accept this sentence, I'm not comfortable discussing X topic with you. Or, I, the, another way to say that to me is agree to disagree. And you guys need to reestablish that friendship because I don't know if you guys are friends. You have to be able to disagree with your friends sometimes. Okay? That's weird. What? You just barely know this person. Even if you did know him, you're over goddamn. It's not you. All right? God damn it. It's fucking. Anyway. Next. Consequence ladder. Establish clear consequences for boundary violations. Start with small warnings and escalate to firmer actions like ending the conversation or limiting contact. If they continue to overstep, don't let people step on you. Don't let, yeah, communication is key. Do not let them overstep. Gray rocking, becoming emotionally unavailable. You're not their sponge. You're not their shoulder. You just, eh, I rather you glue. I rather you glue. Uh, become emotionally unavailable. Offer minimal responses, show no reaction to their provocation and don't give them any ammunition to manipulate your emotions and that is why you do it as a stoic study stoicism guys all right study stoicism you are worthy of respect you deserve it the most important element in defeating manipulation is you by prioritizing your well-being and asserting your boundaries and nurturing your self-respect you build a resilient fortress against their tactics 
These additional techniques are tools that you can add to your belt. Ready to wield when you need it, you're the author of your own story, and no manipulating piece of shit can write it for you, my friend. None. That's the end of the presentation. <laughs> Subscribe, you piece of shit. Don't manipulate me. Wait, am I manipulating people? <laughs> Thank you.